Hello, welcome back. I'm Sarah. Today we're going to sew up the named clothing Clio wrap dress together. So I have had this pattern on my make list for a long time so I'm really excited that today is the day that we are going to get this sewn up. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the version that's pretty much on the front cover so with the long sleeves and the long length and um, I've had a look at the finished garment measurements and I'm going to make a size 14 in mine and um, what I really love about this pattern is that you've got some variations if I bring that closer to so you can make a dress or you can make a jumpsuit you can go sleeves you can go no sleeves and because the style is a wrap it really gives you that room to fluctuate through the summer as we overindulge in a cocktail or two. So the fabric that I am going to be making mine in is this wonderful X Designer floral that we have got in at the moment. This is the fabric that we sent out to everybody along with the pattern if you're in our capsule wardrobe club. It is absolutely wonderful and I think the scale of the print is going to look absolutely wonderful in this dress and um, if we have still got some available i'll pop a little link down below so you can get your hands on some fabric and the pattern as well so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to get my pattern cut out so then we'll jump on over to the overhead camera and i will talk you through anything that you may find a little bit tricky as we work our way through the pattern now this pattern it comes with your dress and your jumpsuit today we're working on the dress version and that's what the capsule wardrobe box is all about this month you if you want to you can do the jumpsuit version you will need more fabric than what we have sent out to you though um about another meter we have kept some of this back in case any of our subscribers don't want to make the dress and do want to make the jumpsuit so you can purchase an extra meter um as always the size banding is really good so sizes 4 to 28 now this is a jersey dress so there is some nice ease within this pattern now i've gone ahead and cut out the size 14 my bust measurement is 43 and a half so I've cut the 14 which is slightly smaller um, because I want it to fit quite nice across the bust and we've got that negative ease in there throughout this pattern the seam allowance is 3 eighths which is one centimeter so just take care of your seam allowance it isn't your normal 5 eighths um, so yeah let's dive in let's get our pattern cut out and let me show you any tips and tricks we've got along the way so starting off with our pattern pieces so as i mentioned earlier she has got the dress version and she's added in this bonus jumpsuit pattern as well so the actual cutting out of the pattern you've really got to stop and think because there's a lot of lines going all over the place so what i would say to do is to grab a highlighter like i've done on this one here so pick what size you're going to make and then i would go over with the highlights so what i've done is i have done green highlighting for the dress version and I did yellow highlighting for the jumpsuit version. I've cut the jumpsuit version out so that if I want to make that at a later date I've got the pattern to be able to do that and then can you see this highlighted line here that's my dress version. All I've done is I've then folded the line in along the dress version so I've got the dress pattern pieces. Um, that is on both sides as well because obviously on this piece you've got a crotch for trousers so just bear that in mind if you know you're never going to make the jumpsuit then you don't have to worry too much about doing that um, but I would highly recommend going around with a highlighter around your size so you know exactly what you're cutting out because there is a lot of lines going all over the place I do feel it would have been better if they were two separate patterns I know it's excellent value to get them in one but um, if you're a new sewer it may put you off right at the first hurdle so go ahead and do that with your pattern pieces and get those cut out and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I've placed my pattern pieces on the fabric so if you look at the lay plan you can see you've got pieces upside down now our fabric is directional we've got flowers on it so I'm going to show you how to make sure when you're placing your pattern pieces you're going to have enough fabric if you go gung ho with this and just place your pattern pieces on and just go ahead and snip you you're not going to have enough fabric um so i'm going to take some time now placing my pattern pieces and i'm going to show you exactly where i place them so that you can make sure you get all of your pattern pieces out of your fabric so i've got this laid out on the kitchen floor 
this is the first piece which is the, the piece that's on the centre fold so we've got the fabric folded in half here um, and we've got the excess fabric over here so I'm going to go ahead and get this first piece cut out then I'm going to place my back pieces onto the fabric and I'll show you how to do that as well so you can see just here where I've just cut that last piece out and now I've placed this piece this is the back piece I've lined up the edge along the salvage end just taking a little bit of care there where we've got the vent and we're going to cut that out on a single fold and then we will move it down and we will cut it again so we've got our two pieces it's really important because this is a directional fabric that we take care when we're cutting this out or we won't get it on the fabric okay so we've got the next piece on now so you can see we've had the first piece out from here the center fold section there we've had the second piece here which was the, your first back piece and then in the section in between we're putting our second back piece piece making sure to flip the pattern piece so that you get a right and a left side so we'll go ahead and cut that out now this section here is where we did our first cut that was our fabric that was on the fold so we've got our tie coming down one side here and we've got our first sleeve on here so we'll go ahead and we'll cut those out and then we'll reposition the last two pieces ready to get those cut out of our remaining fabric okay so i've cut out that sleeve and that tie and i've just repositioned them so just here you can just see the sleeve head of where the first sleeve was cut so i've just flipped my pattern piece so i'm going to get a left and a right sleeve place that there and then i've just the first tie was cut from here and i've just moved this piece over now to cut that from there still got a little bit of space down here and some more off cuts so plenty to get the necktie out um, and if you were making a slightly bigger size than me again you've still got enough wiggle room to play with there so that's how you would use your fabric if you're using a directional print rather than the non-directional which the lay plan and instructions tell you to use okay so we've got our fabric cut out i hope that wasn't too stressful for you um first thing we're doing is interfacing our tie pieces so the interfacing that you've been sent is a special stretch interfacing and it really just gives the fabric that nice little bit of body so if you have got any jersey in your stash that you think is a little bit too floaty then this is a great product still keeps the stretch in the fabric in all ways um but just gives it a little bit more drape and body so with your interfacing you will see that you just need to joint it across to get the full width of the straps so all we do is we place the fabric on top of the interfacing iron it on and then butt the next piece of interfacing up so you've just got a tiny little seam in there that's absolutely fine to do it really gets the most out of your interfacing and you should have you should only use about half your interfacing using this method so you can go ahead and make another one as well so so into go ahead and interface those and then you've also been sent some seam tape so for the um the vent section of your dress just place the seam tape on and iron that on up into the vent section um so i've gone ahead and i've got my center back sewn i've placed some more seam tape on both of my shoulder seams so i'm going to head it go ahead now and get those sewn up um, and then we're going to be ready to insert our neckband so we've got our neckband here and we found our quarter points and we've done that by finding the seam at the back folding that in half coming across and popping a pin in and then matching up that seam to the pin we've just put in and coming along to each edge and popping another pin in so we've got the four quarters of our neckband and then with our garment, we've got that sewn at the shoulder seams now, what we've done is we've put the two seams together at the shoulder seams, match those and come around and that should match the seam that we've got in the back and then come around to the front and pop a pin in. Now our shoulders aren't our true quarter points because the area around the back is a lot less than this big scoop that we've got at the front so then what you're going to do is you're going to match up your seam from your back and your front pin and you will come around and you will see 
that the quarter points are actually a little bit further forward than your shoulder seam itself and it's really important that you just take the time to do that so you've got true quarters so if you measure this section here now at the front it will measure exactly the same as that back section so matching up the seam on your neckband with the seam at the back popping a pin in there and then you're going to go round and you're going to match each pin in each quarter and then you will just gently stretch the neckband between each quarter sewing that down all the way round so there is the neckband in it's a really nice neckband to put in because this is a viscose jersey it's got a really good amount of stretch in it which makes pop popping that neckband in nice and easy now you have got your seam allowance here if you want to you can go ahead and do a row of top stitching just to hold that seam allowance down if that bothers you um, if the neckband really isn't your thing maybe you don't like it too close to your neck or you're just finding it too fiddly then in the same way that um, Tilly does in her cocoa pattern you could just literally get the raw edge fold that under and stitch that down if that's what you prefer so now we're going to move on to the sleeve so I'm electing to do the long sleeve version but again you have got an option to do this sleeveless now in the pattern it does tell you to use bias binding just to finish the edge but again if you don't want to go to the effort of faffing about with bias binding in the same way that I've just explained to you about that neckline you can do exactly the same with the sleeve just folding it under and stitching that down and it will give you a really nice finish because this is jersey the edges don't fray so you can absolutely just fold it under um, like you're doing a little hem so um, that's an option for you if bias binding isn't your friend so the sleeves going really nice and easy nice and flat so I'm gonna go ahead and insert those now so here is the sleeve pinned in place so at the back of the sleeve we always have two notches and at the front of the sleeve we've always got one notch so all I've done is I've got the center of my sleeve and matched that up with my seam allowance at the top I've matched my two notches and then on your dress you should have a little notch where your sleeve finishes so match that up with the two end points and that's my one notch there so all I've done is I've just put a pin in those key anchor points and then I'm going to ease them in between each point on my sewing machine if you feel more confident then pop more pins in at this stage and um, do whatever works for yourself but because this is a jersey fabric and I've been sewing a long time I'm just going to take it straight to the machine and get that sleeve sewn in so I've gone ahead and I've sewn the sleeve down and then carried on sewing to the tip of this point here and then I've got my straps sewn straight down the straight edge and all the way along I've turned those out and given them a press and with that interfacing in this makes these straps really really nice I'm really impressed with that interfacing so what we're going to do is we're just going to open up the dress now and we're just going to pop in the strap And then we're going to sew that in place and then carry on sewing straight down do that on both sides so the tie is in down here and then I've just gone back and forth a couple of times over the tires you're going to be pulling on those a little bit every time you do the dress up so we'll just have a little sneak peek now by turning it round and yep the ties in there beautifully so we've just got the vent section to do now so I've just gone ahead and given that a little press down the stay tape and I'm just going to sew that down pivoting across here and down and then just give it a little bit of hem and your dress is finished it's a really really nice make this one and as we know anything with jersey the seams don't need finishing which really speeds up the sewing time um, and don't forget we have that Maraflex thread um, you have got a regular thread in your box so you need to use your lightning stitch but if you wanted to go ahead and use a straight stitch then we do have the Maraflex thread that would um, speed up the sewing even more so here's the finished make the sleeve length is really nice I've just done a little turn up on there um, and I've chosen to wrap mine around the back just to make the front a little bit flatter um, stand up on the stool so you can get a bit of a closer look so the length is really nice it's got a little slit up the back and I've gathered I've taken that around so you've got the detailing at the back or you can do it at the front if you prefer so I'll just undo it 
and I'll just tidy down the front with a knot. Adding in that special interface into these straps has made them really nice. So I would highly recommend that. So that's it without the straps. So great um, if you're thinking about losing any weight, it fluctuates with you. And um, if you want, you can wrap them around the front. You can tie them at the back or you can bring them round and tie it at the front if that's what you prefer. Um, I think I quite like it at the back and then with long ties left at the front. Yeah, quite like it like that. So yeah, really pleased with it. Really nice simple so I can definitely see some more of these coming in my wardrobe. So I think I might make some sleeveless versions for the heat wave that we've got coming as well. Really nice versatile pattern. So until next time, keep sewing. See you soon. Bye.